So this year's last lecture, um, our alumna lecturer enjoyed Guelph so much, she did two degrees here. She did her first undergrad, graduating in 2005, and then she did what many students come to Guelph for. Jaden even mentioned this. She crossed the street and went to OVC, where she studied for her doctorate in veterinary medicine. And she's now a veterinarian who has a real passion for raising awareness about the connection between humans and animal health and animal welfare. Over the last 15 years, she's amassed a variety of international experiences across the globe working on things just like that. And in 2014, she founded, along with Dr. William Kresh, an organization called Veterinarians International. And VI is a global network of veterinarians, animal health care advocates, and community leaders that connect communities in need with veterinary training, expertise, and resources. And just in case she's not busy enough, she also practices emergency veterinary medicine in numerous specialty hospitals across New York. And because everyone needs a hobby, she is an avid oyster farmer in her spare time. I know, right? Just the amazing things that one can learn to do. So without further ado, your alumna last lecturer, Dr. Scarlett Magda. I'm still crying from Dr. Walsh. It was 2007 on a hot June night, just past midnight in Lampang, Thailand. I had just finished entering the data from my day's observations from my elephant saddle research project. I was exhausted. I stepped outside and walked down the path as I normally do, but I heard a chain drag on the floor. I looked up and saw two giant tusks kissing the ground. He stood as still as a statue, thick long legs like tree trunks holding up 10,000 pounds of flesh and bone were there planted before me. We were both frightened. He, likely because his path to freedom may have just ended, and I, fearful of being trampled, his ears were facing forward. I was fearful he would charge, but then a couple of thoughts entered into my mind. If I remain calm, emit compassion, and slowly back down, I should be okay. I then empathize with his soul. What a life he must have had, being taken away from his mother at the tender age of two and put into a life under human control and command. I felt so bad for this animal. He was actually able to break free from his chains and escape. But escape to where? To what future? I was compelled to send this elephant love and peace, knowing his future was grim. I bowed my head, pressed my hands together, and said namaste. I stood there and waited for him to depart. I heard his chain fading off in the distance. I opened my eyes and he was gone into the darkness. My journey in global health started here while I was a third year biology student at this incredible institution. A year when I broke free from the chains, what then felt like painstaking courses like calculus and physics, to immerse myself in subjects that I was truly passionate about, like the natural history of Ontario, critical thinking and equine management. The first two years here were just brutal. <laughs> I felt like a total failure, like I didn't belong. A failure because I didn't do so great on the MCAT. Yeah, we needed it back then. And because I failed to get into vet school, my life's dream. I escaped to LA at the time that I received the news. I was looking for a backup plan in case my dream to be a vet didn't come true. Well, I didn't exactly succeed at finding that backup plan. All I found in LA was a bunch of lost souls that were way too concerned about their appearance and not much else. I felt even more lost. But I believe that everything happens for a reason. And it was then that I had the great fortune of having an influential meeting on my life's trajectory. 
I met Lord Robin Russell, one of the former trustees of the UK charity elephant family. He sat me down and explained the Asian elephant crisis to me, a situation where elephants in the wild are at war with humans every single day because of habitat loss and destruction. 80% of their habitat is gone. They have nowhere to go. In addition, elephants in captivity are not better off. The majority of them are on short chains, isolated from one another for most of the day. I knew at that moment that I had a calling to devote my career and inspirations to this cause. The last words Robin said to me were, Scarlett, if you go into this world, you are going up against a tsunami. Those words struck a chord in me that continue to resonate in my soul today. Compels me to keep going. I was then ready to return to Guelph in my final year and give it my all. Of all the stories that I have, there are so many to choose from, but I chose to pick these two because I wanted to pass along what has been so important in my life. First, you have to find what you are passionate about. Once you do that, the rest will flow. It is that passion that will drive you through the difficult times, the times when you think things just can't get any worse. The second is to realize that when you fail at something, it is not actually failure. It is the universe redirecting you to go in a different path. The great educator and author, Kent M. Keith, once wrote, the biggest men and women with the biggest ideas can be shot down by the smallest men and women with the smallest minds. Think big anyway. Each of you have tools to build your life. You are graduating from one of the finest institutions in the world. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> Never forget it. But in addition to a great education and being inspired, you have to be willing to do the work. You have to work so hard that the concept of time ceases to exist. People wonder, how am I able to travel all the time, have interesting programs all over the world, and have a busy social calendar? Well, my secret is I also work hard as a freelance emergency veterinarian where I'm in charge of my schedule. This past Friday night, it was 7 p.m., I was so proud of myself for discharging 75% of the patients in the ICU. I finally sat down to have a cup of tea when, boom, in comes the hit by car with the head trauma trailing slowly behind. I triaged the hit by car, gave some stabilization orders, and bolted into the pharmacy when I see my nurse holding a goose under her right arm. I then proceed to take one of the biggest slides of my life, and this is when my figure skating skills came into great use. I asked, why is there shit on the pharmacy floor? <laughs> I'm so sorry, Dr. Magda, it was the goose, as she's staring up with her sad eyes. I didn't leave the hospital until midnight, but we all had a good laugh. It was that much needed comic relief that enabled me to get through that 15 hour shift. I was then able to spend the next three days focusing on Vets International. It all sounds crazy, I know, but this is how I'm able to do what I'm inspired to do. In exchange, I wake up each day with a heart full of love and gratitude, and I try and live each and every day as if it's my last. As you guys leave the comforts of this campus, you will be offered jobs. I implore you not to take a job just to build your resume. Build a job to feed your soul and build your life. President Lincoln once said, it's not the years in your life, but the life in your years. The last story I want to share with you is about manifestation. This is when you envision something, believe in it, and you know it to be true. While I was a student here, I was fortunate to be on the board of Vets Without Borders Canada, which was actually founded here at Guelph in 2005. I learned a ton about global health and organizational management. I was mostly involved in 
strategic planning and development. I then moved to the US to start a small animal medicine and surgery internship when I started wondering what was that country doing in global health. I learned that there actually wasn't a platform to provide veterinary care and training to remote communities for all animals and also have animal welfare built into its mission. I realized this was a big opportunity, an opportunity to do something really special. I envisioned being able to help animals all over the world. I spent six years recruiting the top veterinarians in global health, as well as the brightest minds in business, finance, marketing, and law. And in 2014, I launched Veterinarians International with world-renowned wildlife vet, Dr. William Koresh. VI will now be entering its fifth year this September, where some of our accomplishments include supporting the vaccinations of over 13,000 dogs, cats, and elephants against rabies, one of the deadliest viruses known to man. We provide an emergency response vehicle for animals and natural disasters in Chile. We support the veterinary needs of 52 rescued chimps from an illegal pet and wildlife trade. These chimps witness their families murdered so that they can be sold into the pet trade or eaten for meat. We provide access to veterinary care and training and with health kits to over 300 families in Kenya and Haiti who depend on their goats and donkeys to survive. In the community that we work in Kenya, a woman will spend between six and eight hours just to get water. She can, and this is every day, she can only carry 20 liters, but a donkey can carry 80, thanks to the comfortable harnesses we're able to provide them. Our Asian Elephant Health and Welfare Program provides veterinary care to 200 elephants in the Surin Elephant Kingdom, a place where elephants are chained for 20 hours on average with their front feet shackled. We've made partnerships with the Thai government Zoological Parks Organization, the Golden Triangle Asian Elephant Foundation, and the Smithsonian Institute to create a welfare program that includes positive reinforcement training, and we're now raising money to build the first ever elephant bonding enclosure. It's slow, but steady progress. The image of that tusker dragging his broken chain into the darkness is one that will be buried into my mind forever. But this past January, tears rolled down my face as I was sitting by the river in Surin and saw a mom, her baby, and an auntie socializing, enjoying each other's company off chain. They were simply just being elephants. We must have hope and have the courage to make the difference. Oh well. <laughs> Look at the word impossible. Daunting, I know, right? Audrey Hepburn had the vision to look at it in a different way. I'm possible. Nothing is impossible because I'm possible. Think it, dream it, live it. Follow your heart, do what you love, open yourself up fully, break those chains. Because where there is darkness, there is light. Be the light. Thank you. <laughs>